fantastic. All right, so let's um let's dive in, shall we, Grace? So it's um my pleasure to introduce Grace. She is talking about new year, new beginnings, and I think one of the the interesting parts of this too is you've had, I guess, Warren and I fairly direct and masculine with our presentation, and you're going to get the more <laughs> um more feminine, um, arguably more powerful, but a little bit softer in terms of presentation. That's one of the reasons we work well together is that balance of the masculine and the feminine. So. Grace, handing over to you, new year, new beginnings. Um, as always, um, love listening to you speak. So handing over to you. Thank you, Steve Vincent. Okay. Actually, it's a more of a relaxed environment, isn't it? Is everyone enjoying the environment, the energy that's happening right now since we started this morning? Yeah, I, I just so everyone knows too, I did, um, I messaged... Grace privately a little while ago and said, wow, the energy from the group is just, it's really, it's really high and really positive this morning. And um, she picked up on that too. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah so firstly, um, you know, let's just begin with how is everyone? You've heard two messages today, different sides. So one is uh, very instructive from Warren and from Steve looking at all the shadows so that we can go into the new year and a new beginning, what it means for you. So how's it been so far? Let's get into, if you can drop into your heart, um, because you've been receiving things intellectually and receiving things through knowledge. So if we move in the spirit of the whole messages this morning or this afternoon for some of you, uh, let's just get feedback on how's it going, how's the flow. Penny's feeling quite teary, edge of surrender. That's beautiful. <clears throat> Great. Now, again, part of the feminine energy is to, as Penny said, there's to surrender, to let go. Putting the fear in perspective, loving this. Definitely karma. <clears throat> flowing naturally. <clears throat> now, the, the other reason why I'm asking you these questions, everyone, is so that we're flowing in the fluid. So feminine is uh, water, and water is fluid, flexible. And your response and your participation is really important too because um, without you guys here, we wouldn't be doing this at all. And so it's a giving and receiving feedback, like any form of communication. So what we're doing right now is doing it energetically. And as you respond, if, a, if you can sense the energy lifting up now, feeling a really powerful new strength, wonderful. <clears throat> Relieved, hope, feeling good reflecting, saying no and loving everyone instead of resenting. That's a big one, you did. <clears throat> huge, huge, that one. Loving everyone instead of resenting. How powerful is that? Because is that? there's so much hate, isn't there? Hope and lots of reflection, grateful to learn, some practical tools. Feels good today. <clears throat> Fantastic. Accepting the grace of God in my life. It's great, Satch. So you notice um, as we're reading everyone's comments here, you notice uh, for those who are sensitive or for those who can feel and tune into the energy, can you feel the lifting in your sacral, in your solar plexus, and also your heart chakra is opening up? So we talk about the chakras, we talk about energy, we talk about frequency. How does it actually work in our everyday life? How does it manifest in everyday life? So as we're doing this, you notice the energy, the flow. <clears throat> That's great. More understanding, compassion, more understanding of what's going on. Awareness of tools. I have more confidence in not only moving through the fear, but also in manifesting the reality that I want to live in. Relieve, we don't have to work so hard, helping others with the natural medicine, but also just transforming the frequency feeling state. Beautiful. 
Yes, because for, for those of you who are walking this path, what are we walking on this path? Either we are in 3D or 5D. It's a matter of choice, isn't it? We have a choice to walk on, on this path. We either look at it as linear or we look at it as multiverse. So Fiona is seeing the big picture. <clears throat> That's great. Thanks for your response, everyone. So as I said, I'll repeat again, those who are participating and making comments, can you sense the energy in you? Even though, you know, it takes courage to actually share, it takes a lot of courage to write things on the chat so that everyone can see what you're saying. But it also you notice something happens in you, something happens in your mind, something happens in your heart or all in your heart chakra maybe. Um, perhaps in your solar plexus as well, there's a kind of a release. There's a release that um, when you share uh, a sense of release and you're moving forward and, um, and also there's something of adjustment of vibration, a change of vibration in yourself, a change in your mindset as well, the more you participate. It's good. You can relax, Christine. <clears throat> Yes. So, hang on a sec. Oops. So, Vicky says, you can feel when the world's energy is down. Yes. Pressure valve, some sense of ready. Yes, I can feel it. Yep. Sam, I can feel my vibration is high and my heart is wide open, excited. It's peace in my heart right now, slower breathing, warmth all over. Body's relaxing and mind, that's great. Feeling heart opening, relaxed. Excellent, guys, excellent. <clears throat> it's important to really ground yourself as well and to really feel it and reflect it, integrate it in your body. So first of all, we receive it in our mind, right? We receive it in our mind. We take it to a heart power <clears throat> and also that we, most of the time we forget we've got a body. And so if you allow those words, the logos, to really dwell into your cell, cellular structure, to really integrate into your body, um, you notice there's some healing that comes through. And like you say, you're feeling calmness, you're feeling really peaceful. So Robin says, I became very physically tired. Period, Doug, part of Steve's wonderful presentation. Felt I was processing a big life change and how much energy I'm putting into being the warrior. Yeah. Feeling grateful, connection to your souls, even though you aren't physically the same room as me. Yes. <clears throat> so just because you are Sachi, I know you're in New Zealand. Sheldon is in Canada. And most of you are in the east of Australia. We are in the west. And yet we are collectively as one, moving as one here, aren't we? So <clears throat> I've just got a short presentation. Um, now, most of you know, I think, uh, I'm a student of Dr. John Diamartini. I've been doing it, doing his, uh, I've been his student since 2005. So most of my teachings when I share in a group setting like this, I love to share his teachings, just like um, Steve shared earlier about the seer, the seeing and the seen are one and the same. And so everything that I do, all the things that I share in, in terms of a teaching, um, I just want to share what he does. Because to me, um, at the end of the day, nothing is new under the sun. Um, <clears throat> and the wonderful thing that Dr. John Martini always talks about is that he uh, stands on the shoulders of the giants. So his, why, his genius is to be able to collect all the information from the past and to assimilate in our everyday language, in our language of today. And he has the ability to really get the complicated formulas of the metaphysics, the esoterics, and all the ologies that he studies, um, he's able to break it down and simplify it for, for us. So I uh, I do love his teaching in that sense um, because I'm I'm interested in myself, all the ologies, but I just don't have the time that he does because he, he does it full time. Um, 
he researches, he teaches um, and presents like 18 hours a day, 14 hours a day. Um, I've recently experienced um, Empyrean course with him for 10 days. And uh, that was like each day was 14 hours a day. So I started from 5 a.m. in the morning, my time, till like 8, sometimes 9 o'clock in the evening, every day for 10 days. So that's how insane he is, really, really insane. And it's full on math formula, physics, all sorts of um, studies. And uh, but yeah, so I just glean from his knowledge. And part of it is he wants to build his own legacy. And so I guess what I'm doing is just sharing his legacy that he wants to leave. Um, and it makes sense to me anyway, what he teaches. So. So here we go. So now Steve's asked me to, the topic is new year, new beginning. So really, let's have a look at that. Um, new year, new beginnings. So let me ask you, what does it mean for you? New year, new beginnings. <clears throat> because if we really are uh, spiritual beings, do we go by time and do we go by space? Uh, yes, we do, because I guess spirit and matter do come in hand, hand in hand together. So um, we all have different meanings, new year, new beginnings. So to me, for example, new year, new beginnings is every day is a new year. Every day is a new beginning. Um, if we are, again, walking in this narrow path, death comes to us each day. Resurrection comes each day. So perhaps death and resurrection are one and the same every day. Because if we are to um, do a quantum leap or even a paradigm shift in our minds, then there has to have death. Death in the ego, um, death in everything that we do, all the habits that we do. Now, death <clears throat> means to me is transformation. So again, it's a wordplay a word play, word play and what it means for us in our perspective. And so, again, death is, yes, it's an end, an end all, and yet it's a transformation because if any energy you cannot destroy, can you? Um, according to thermodynamics, energy you can only transform. It cannot be destroyed. So we are transformers. So, again, new year, new beginnings for me is all about what it is today. And if we are living in the present, in the power of now, uh, the new year, the new beginnings is just right this moment. So Sharon says, this year means a lot, 99 and 999, guiding me with that all dropping away. And the new is coming through in a big way in 2022, endings and beginnings. That's great. <clears throat> Fantastic. So I ask you also, what is new year and what is new beginnings to you? Because personally, I don't want to put things, thoughts in your mind. Um, I just invite you to, um, you know, to see it for yourself. What does it mean for you? Because I'm sure some of us do numerology or astrology or Vedic astrology. And I just invite you to look into it. Really look and dig deep what it means for you. As we said in the beginning, you know, whatever resonates for you, you take. Whatever doesn't resonate, well, you chuck it out. Um, so my form, my format is that I like to invite you and then you research it yourself. So opportunity to reset, constant change, Christine. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you love change? Perspective shift is what it means. Yes, stepping into my true self and living. Here we go. Getting on with your life and never let others hold you back. You see, releasing the old purification of intention. No, it never stops, is it, Christine? 2022, my year to do, putting all my training and learning over many years together into massive action and results. That's fantastic, Chris. Waking up. Love that. Have you been asleep, Sheldon? Having the courage to make the changes? Yes. I would agree with you, Joanne. It takes a lot of courage to bring a change because who, you know, who wants to change when you're comfortable? 
when you're comfortable, you everything's in its place, isn't it? An awakening, exactly. Honoring the past year and being open to what 2022 brings. Fantastic. The end of procrastinating. Hmm. That's an interesting one, Seamus. Death, old ideas and rebirth of the new ones, which gives space for the new to come in. Letting go of old behaviours, beliefs, bad patterns, taking action, having faith. Great. <clears throat> well, Fiona, you said letting go. So part of what I'm what I'm what I was going to share today is letting go of the old and how this relates to the events of 2021. <clears throat> so part of letting go of the old is what? Um, death, transformation. Letting go of comfort, security. You must agree that this year has been insane. Each year is just going crazier and crazier, doesn't it? Living in light, maybe your true self, opportunity for a new fresh beingness. I like that, Jennifer. <clears throat> Mm. so it has been an interesting year 2021 hasn't it each year just gets interesting so how do we really flow how do we find comfort in all the messiness eh? how do we how do we actually meet the challenges and the um the all the changes that comes in every way particularly you know for example, Queensland has just had that passport ID, and I know it's affected Steve as well as Sam, and those who are living in Queensland, um, you know, those who've chosen not to be vaxxed, well, it's going to be challenging times ahead if you love the cafe, love going to restaurants and pubs and things like that, because um, you'd have to have the ID. So how do we overcome that? And... Um, with Brad Cusworth sharing earlier uh, what Steve um, read, uh, I think such a fantastic way to ask that question. So what if COVID is a gift to all of us? <clears throat> so if we really are walking on this path again, do we get ourselves distracted, really? Do we get ourselves distracted in, um, in sports, in movies in all these things that wants to get all our attention in the external world so if we really are seriously into um, ascension and make a change in the energy field in the morphic field and the etheric field even then we are really a busy people going inward aren't we and so inward journey truly means um, exactly going inward <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing complicated about that. Um, the external world always wants to keep us distracted, wants to um, get our attention on, you know, finding the meaning on the outside. But really, if we find meaning in our life, we go inward, don't we? We go and find and listen to our inner voice within. That is really our truth. I mean, the first rule of thumb is know yourself. Know thyself really well. So how do you know yourself is listen and tuning in to the beat of your drum tuning into your inner voice inner guidance um not only you're just inner guidance within but we all know that we have friends in high places we have friends that can show us um and guide us where we need to go but in order to do that uh we really have to have listening ear listening heart and listening mind to to be guided through that knowing. So Jennifer says a constant asking to be more in flow and out of resistance. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I, I like to begin with this quote. I love this quote from Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions your actions become your habits your habits become your values 
your values become your destiny. So can you see the process? Can you feel the process? Can you sense the process of that quote of Gandhi's? And I love this quote because Gandhi lived it. He lived his life this way. I mean, it's, you can, we can say it over and over as an affirmation, but it really comes alive when you just know it and when you live it, don't you? So your beliefs become your thoughts. Thoughts become your words. And all these steps, words, actions, habits, values, destiny. So it goes from inward. You notice thoughts coming from inwards and then basically bit by bit it goes external. Now, most of us humans, we love to externalise and find the answers on the outside, don't we? We seek the answers on the outside because it's much easier, really, really much easier. But if we just go inward and then go outward, that is just more less confusing, that's for sure. Christine says, so it's about selecting your beliefs consciously. Yeah, have a look at your beliefs. Have a look at what rules, what's inside of you. And, you know, we're here to really look at all the things that we think about, what we do. <clears throat> so let's begin. So most people who struggle through life ask themselves such uninspiring questions that their lives become exactly that, uninspiring. I mean, not just other people, but have you asked these questions yourself? So what I mean with less inspiring questions is, for example, why is this happening to me? How will I or can I afford to do this? So as, as I said, I shared with you earlier that um, uh, with Brad's um, saying about the gift, if we really think about, if we have we thought about COVID as a gift, so it's a matter of looking at the quality of your questions. So if we really, if you're a seeker of the truth, if you're a seeker of um, universal law, it just depends on the questions you, you ask, isn't it? Because it's our intention and our questions. That's the answers we get from the universe. There's no, nothing complicated about the universe. It's all about um, the quality of our questions. So. Um, so just that's two examples of less inspiring questions and more inspiring questions um, to the less one is how is whatever is happening helping me fulfill what is most meaningful and inspiring to me, my mission in life? Now, can you feel the difference in asking that question to why is this happening to me? to how is whatever is happening helping me fulfill what is most meaningful and inspiring to me, my mission in life? How can I get handsomely paid to do this in comparison to how will I or can I afford to do this? Can everyone feel the difference in the questions? So Faye says, victim versus being in our power. Absolutely spot on, Faye. So again, your questions is relevant when you're asking the universe what you're wanting, isn't it? What you're desiring. So if you come from an empowered position, an empowered place, then... Uh, what do you think the universe would do? How would the universe respond to that in comparison to being a victim? Sashi says, my mother used to tell us as kids, ask a silly question and you get a silly answer, precisely. But then again, what is a silly question? So if you're not inspired about your life, or not living the life you truly dream of, it may partially be due to the type of questions you're asking yourself. Have you ever thought of that? Mm. 
Sharon says, I hear it. I got told by Spirit Builder and they will come in relation to my energy, business and financial lack. <laughs> no silly questions is where we are at. Yes. So any questions you ask, you know, I really, I really encourage you to have a look. And I'm sure most of you do journal um, because we all want to be living a fulfilling life, don't we? We want to be living an inspiring life. How boring is it if we're not inspired, if we're not fulfilled, and we're just plainly victim to what is handed out to us in the world at the moment? I mean, <clears throat> a lot of you, most most people know that there's, um, you know, there's a state of depression in everyone. There's a state of fear, state of anxiety, state of uh, state of worry, all those stuff, all those emotional things. So really, um, if you ask all these the questions that you really seek and what you're wanting in the universe and how you want to live this life, I really encourage you to have a look at it again and really reevaluate and reword your questions. So the moment you ask quality questions, Quality questions is the moment your life begins to transform to a more quality and fulfilled life. And the value of asking high quality questions is to help you become more fully conscious. trying to maneuver my PowerPoint here, guys. <laughs> so again, I'm going to read that again. The value of asking high quality questions is to help you become more fully conscious. Anthony asks, sees asking why am I victim and asks instead how can I profit this? Excellent. Love that, Anthony. Any other suggestions, guys, just put it on the chat so that we all can see, um, you know, all the things that you've been asking yourself. If you can rearrange, reorganize it so that it's more empowered, it'd be great for everyone to see what you actually do and how you um, transform that. So just like what Anthony says there, why am I a victim? And instead ask, how can I profit from this? So when you're conscious of something, you're often unconscious of something else. You'll tend to focus your attention on what you're conscious of and filter or block out some, block out some of the other details. Do you find that? Because I certainly do. Unless you ask quality questions that lead you to awareness of that which is unconscious, you are not likely to become fully conscious and see both sides of the events in your life. And seeing both sides is key to you being able to live your most emp empowered, inspired and authentic life. So again, the value of asking quality questions is to allow you to see things, opportunities, potentials, and parts of yourself that you may be disowning so you can truly master your life. So we heard um, earlier Steve sharing about the shadow work. So when you disown part of you, so disowning that shadow of you, um, you, you don't master your life so the idea for us is to actually embrace the shadow and look at it feel it sit with it in order to transform it and to really master our life Simone asks I asked what great adventure can I have today what generative energy space and consciousness can I be it's wonderful So the, the key thing here is to be able to see both sides. 
because if we don't see both sides, we're lopsided really. We can only see one side and um, that's not in a balanced state, is it? So you're going to love yourself if you embrace all parts of yourself. The same applies to the people around you and the rest of the world. You get to love and appreciate them more by asking quality questions. Again, I'll go back to Brad um, Cosworth's comment about the COVID. What's happening around the world is when you look at it metaphorically, it's just part of the massive, the masses of what's going on. So it's just we deal with ourselves first and then we go out ripple effect on the outside. And so part of it is if we don't embrace all of us, then um, we're just lopsided. There's only, we only like part of, of us. And what happens to the other parts that we don't love? So if you just go out, continually go out of yourself. So if only some parts of the world we accept, um, where is that going to take us? It's... <laughs> It's just like an example of you, someone preferring night to day. And someone says, you know, day is much better than night. But we need both day and night. Otherwise, we, if we simply just be day people, where do we need our rest? Where do we have time for rest? Now. Any disowned parts in your life disempowers you. The unconscious awareness that you're not fully mindful of is what disempowers you and distracts you in life. So again, any disowned parts in your life disempowers you. Because how can you cut yourself in half? You're trying to kill half. Most of the time, we, you know, we... We tried to kill half of us, didn't we? Um, it was good to uh, for Steve to go through that selfish selfishness with Tracy, because at the end of the day, we're all we're all nasty and kind. We're both the same. We're good and we're evil at the same time. Um, I used to say to my boys, you know, you choose the yummy mummy or the nasty mummy, because I'm both. I'm I'm both. So I choose to. Um, own every part of me so owning all our shadows it becomes um Mila, it really empowers you so i really encourage you to do the shadow work and really look at it don't hide from it don't run away from it um just embrace it embrace it for what it is it's there to really empower you to expand you to um to really reach you to your new horizon And just to finalize um, what I'm saying here is a master lives in the world of transformation, not the world of loss and gain. That's a powerful quote from John D. Martini. A master lives in the world of transformation, not the world of loss and gain. The masses... Um, the masses are, are operating in pain and pleasure. We avoid pain, we seek for pleasure. And if we really are here to master and to uh, ascend to the next level and increase our frequency and vibration, we're here to master our world. Firstly, to master ourselves and then outside of us, our inner circle and so forth. So in order for us to really master ourselves, um, we live in that transformation. We embrace shadow work. We embrace everything. We embrace challenges, hero's journey. We go through that. Uh, we embrace all, all cynicism. Um, I was talking to Warren actually this morning. We've got the same word about cynicism. If you want to increase the level of authority you have in your life, then you've got to accept cynics you gotta accept um the negativity and all sorts of things coming at you um <clears throat> so let's have a look 
Christine says, as you were talking, I was wondering why do I struggle with rejection? What does it teach me about acceptance? What does it teach me about the value of self-acceptance or why I'm rejecting myself and others? That's great, Christine. Great questions. So I'd encourage you to ponder on that, really um, chew on that and see what comes for you. Um, I see the benefits of rejection, why rejection comes your way. See the benefits of it, how it serves you, how rejection really serves you in your life. Think of it as a person um, and then start breaking it down. Bring yourself into um, into sense of balance with that. Because, again, if we are to master our lives, we... Um, we are in a balanced state mentally, emotionally, physically, everything about us. And we're not operating in loss or gain. So really my message there is to ask yourself all these quality questions um, and really for the new year, reevaluate what's going in your thoughts what you're feeding yourself, who you're hanging out with, how you're increasing and tuning into the frequency and vibration and all these things. So really ponder, really ponder and chew on these things and, um, and really, really be present, absolutely be present, connected to your body. Sharon says, I think people in general prefer arousal than true death and peace. <laughs> yes. Fear, anger, grief, happiness, sexuality, etc. Yes. It gives you dopamine, doesn't it, Sharon? We're all addicted. We're all drug addicts, aren't we? Humans are all drug addicts. We like to get our fix, don't we? Love you, express and ponder to you, Vev. Thanks, Diane. <clears throat> so you know what, embrace what's coming 2022, whatever comes for you, embrace the challenges, embrace the cynicism, embrace all this because at the end of the day, we all want to be a master, aren't we? We all want to be a master in our lives, whatever that means for you. And we're all here for transformation and we're all here to get over our drug addiction. <laughs> It is a drug, isn't it, Sharon? <laughs> Life is a drug. Life is full of illusion. Um, you know, uh, you don't have to take psychedelics or, or, or substances to know that it is a, this is what it is. And we're here to break all our illusions, the Maya, the Maya of our universe. And I encourage everyone to really connect with people who you, who you resonate with, who you vibrate with because we can do this collectively. Um, it's not a one man, one woman show anymore. So if you, I'd encourage you to really stick to people that you can um, grow with and, uh, and work these things through. And I just wanna say, you know, I really appreciate you guys being coming to our webinars, being, you know, being involved in everything that we've been doing, sharing all these messages, all these um, few months. Really, really appreciate and thank you for um, uh, joining us today and joining us all other webinars as well because our heart really here is to serve you guys. So just as much as we're serving you, we're serving ourselves and we're learning everything um, in ourselves and what we see in you. So it's not just um, not you guys. It's not us delivering these messages to you and to let you know, but it also teaches us. It really does. Um, we're all testimonials for one another and the gurus of these days is going to be finishing isn't it we're all gurus in ourselves so I'd encourage you to really begin the new year is that you are a guru in your own life you are your own um, mentor in your life so with that, thank you for listening. I think my time is up. Is that right, Steve?
I think you're right on time, Grace. It's the perfect symmetry of just finishing right on time, right? Uh, thank, thank you very much for that. I love that quote on that you had on the screen there. Um, and, and I think your, <clears throat> your, different, your different pace was really appreciated too. It just brought a whole different energy um, to the group, which was great. Um, and yeah, I, I'm happy to own. I'm addicted to pleasure. I run from pain faster than just about anyone, I think. so. <laughs> but that's one of the my, my shadows that I'm working on, right? Um, oh, hey, you're not the only one, Steve. Yeah. I mean, I've been running away all my life to be honest mm. and it's like well where do I hide I can't hide anywhere really yeah. <laughs> and the, the rocks um the you know the the um the lightning will get me or the worms mm. or whatever so there is no place to hide is there yeah. yeah it's it's really it's really interesting my grace I'm I'm a pleasure seeker and a real coward and I run away from the pain except when I'm brave and lean into it <laughs> you know and, and I'm, I'm both of those and you know what um you don't judge yourself either yeah. just because you are a pleasure seeker and you avoid pain um you know the the best thing you can do is own it really really own it in that shadow work that you shared earlier mm. own everything and that it's okay because yeah. at the end of the day well yeah that's what you are um and then eventually things just pan out doesn't it mm. totally yeah and it's really it's really interesting once you release all that energy it doesn't have such a hold on you anymore and you can move forward you know you can move forward much easier and without that heavy weight on your shoulder mm. yeah so yeah thanks grace that was wonderful speaking of moving forward and clearing things um uh, our, our next guest is actually grace and warren's son william and um <laughs> his his topic is um dna activation and ascension and I can speak from personal experience working with him has helped uncover and move things that I didn't even know that existed. And um, he has remarkable abilities. So um, I'm really looking forward to DNA activation and ascension. Um, Grace, anything else? You, I mean, it's without you being all mummy and he's my boy kind of thing. Is there anything else you want to add um, about William? Well, actually, you know, when... What... Well, as you know, Steve, William and I work really well mm. and we always work together in energy. So uh, when he and I work together, we're not mother or son. Mm. We are energy workers together. We're transformers and we we take aside the 3D, which is the label of mum and son. And we look at each other as um, co-workers in the energy field. And so when we do these things... Um, um we encourage one another i become the feminine for his masculine to give him the energy to give him that clearance to give him um the empowerment to do what he needs to to clear the blockages and everybody so it's a it's a fantastic um uh, to, for those who really want to you know doing the energy work particularly if you're with the blood family um that's how we we've always worked so that we separate the physical we separate the matter and we put the spirit together. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> that's. I'll just make one quick comment about that. Was a really interesting learning for me as well, Grace, to to be able to separate that. I mean, when I first heard it, I think part of my shadow was, oh, well, that's not overly caring, um, you know. And yet, and that was just again my projection, like that bitch Tracy, right? That is that bitch Grace kind of thing. It's that same energy. Yeah. Um, you know, but it wasn't about you and William. It was about me. And my yes. perceptions and my shadows and and till i own that and look at all of that that stuff keeps running my life so i'm looking forward to this one dna activation and ascension will are you are you online are you with us yes all right will come on camera and um share your screen because you you have the floor hang on we'll have to make him co-host okay all right so who's so Ed, can you do that, please? Can you? Edward, we'd have to make William co-host. <laughs> Perhaps they're going to lunch, Steve, yeah, and yeah. left that behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, going on. you it's, sing it's, i dance it's, it's, it's only grace talking let's duck out <laughs> <laughs> well you can sing steve i'll dance <laughs> Hang on. I'll, hey I'll guys sing. what's happened is we're literally um we're listening and we're involved but we're three minutes from home we went out to get something so 
we're going to try it. We're, we're, so we'll be able to do it in five minutes' time. But we didn't realise Edward was coming host. Well, can Edward make me host? Because me. as co-host, we cannot change William to... Okay, well, we're going back home now. We're like literally four minutes from home. So I'll get um, Ed to we'll just quickly change his straight away and make someone else the host. <laughs> so just have a yammer for four minutes and then we shall be, we shall be back. Okay, so this is where the director's doing this, right? <laughs> stretch, stretch. Thank, <laughs> thanks for that, Warren. That's a nice... Uh... <laughs> oh. See, I was right, Steve. That didn't take off now. I've tried oh, to on. do... We've been well. listening. We have been <laughs> listening, but we've just been out while we've been listening. Yeah, yeah, talk's cheap, Warren. Yeah, hang on, Will. Can you, <laughs> I can see you on screen now, Will? Can you um, can you unmute and share or not? Couldn't see you on screen. Yeah, before. yeah. Okay, there we are. Good. Okay. Okay, I made him right. pan panelist. Okay, right. it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Okay, I cannot do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I have no power, no control. Uh, what's with all these technical difficulties? It's just certain people went out for lunch. <laughs> All right, there's, just while we're waiting, there's a couple of other comments there, Grace, if you want to have a quick look at them. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> there's, there's nothing like a smooth transition, right? And this is nothing like yeah. a smooth transition. So. Absolutely. Look, we're flowing, aren't we, Steve? We're flowing. So this, is the, this is the smoothest transition out of all of us today. Yeah, yeah. So Christine says, once I woke to one night in my room and when I took it outside, there was a snail right on the floor in front of the house, it was sitting up with its antenna looking right right at me. So I had to find out what they were trying to tell me. Yeah, the slug is very strong. I can't even share my screen because the host disabled that as well. Yes, William, we're waiting for the host to come back. <laughs> <laughs> What else have we got? Um, All right, well, the well, host, do you, the host do you need your body. well? Do you need your PowerPoint to to do the first, or can you start off with? Um, we're only two minutes away now, guys. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why aren't we? <laughs> Think you'll be well. I mean, they're not that fast, so I mean, I'm happy to wait. Did he yeah, say ten right. minutes or two minutes? I, I thought I heard ten, but anyway, <laughs> I think must have been two. <laughs> Um, right. uh, I, shall, we, shall we do some energy work? Actually, that's a great idea, Grace. I've got Let's my wand. Yeah, yeah, do that. Let's. He's only yeah. like a couple minutes, though, isn't that, he? That's okay. Yeah, Grace, do some. Do a little bit of energy work. Yeah. Okay. Let's do. Um, I'll shoot. I'll do some code here. Yeah. You know, you guys could have in those last two minutes while you were talking gone through all the grand slings of today. That's what we're finding funny. All right, let's do some coding here. Now, William, can you activate this code for me, please? Okay. Is this code new? Uh, kind of. You haven't seen this before? No. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this higher code be used to be activated into each person here, activating it into their chakras, into their aura, into their physical body, into their DNA, into their mind, and activating its frequencies and energies and the consciousness of it to each person here. <sighs> to Asia in today.
Well, that's really activating and pulsating. It is, isn't it? Mm. So opening up the third eye, aligning the chakra in everyone here, aligning, balancing. Yes. <clears throat> Grounding all of us to Mother Gaia. <sighs> Inviting Holy Spirit Metatron. Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene. Speaking nourishment, nourishment of the heart and the soul. Increasing everyone's vibration and frequency. Opening our heart to love, unconditional love. Coming from the appearance of pure light, pure joy, pure glory. Clear or any blockages, Will? Just are you actually going to do that in your presentation? In the presentation, in the presentation, I'm going to be doing like a general DNA activation. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Let's let's clear the blockages now to prepare the ground for for everyone to receive that. We'll clear the blockages. Yeah, clear the blockages so that they can um, receive that when you activate the DNA. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that any that any blockages or imprints around the dna are cleared from each person here so clear we now clear any blocks or any imprints <coughs> or auric attachments hindering each person here from receiving the full dna activation experience now to asia in today <clears throat> Clear from the crown chakra down to sacral, down to the base. Clearing the chakras, clearing the aura. Okay, release. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone.